This is Nate with Landmark Implement, and today we'll be going over the basic AMS and display setup on the S700 series combine utilizing the new Gen 4 4600 monitors. Now if growers come from the GS3 monitors, we'll find that a lot of the functionality is the same, but it will be displayed in a different format in some different areas. The Gen 4 monitor is very user-friendly and highly customizable. You'll find that a lot of the modules and icons that are on the page are actually shortcuts to other functions on the screen. So instead of taking four or five button pushes through the menu like we've done in the past, we can simply push on those icons that will take us to the shortcut to that page. On the combines here, we do have a bunch of default pages that John Deere has made for us utilizing a bunch of the common information that growers would typically have set up and want to see during harvest. Now you can change any of these pages by copying them and modifying them to your needs or by starting with a blank page and adding the modules that you want to see on your customized page. Once we have our pages set up, one of the first things we'll want to do is go ahead and set up our combine to get it ready to go harvest. We'll do this by selecting our setup button in the lower left hand corner of the screen and filling this out in the same way that we've done on 2630s. To map properly, we need to have our location information filled out, our client, farm, and field. Then we'll want to ensure that our combine is selected for our equipment. By pushing on our combine setting, we can go in and see all of our GPS offsets, and we'll want to make sure that we double check these settings to make sure they're accurate. From there, we do have a shortcut that can take us to our header settings which should also be pre-populated that I'll talk about here in a little bit. Lastly, on our setup page, we'll set up our documentation portion. For here, we'll enter in our crop type. In this scenario, I'm gonna go ahead and change this over to corn. And then we see the combine advisor is changing over to the crop setting. Next box down is our varieties. You can enter in the variety if you'd like to track that, or if you've set up your variety files and mapping ahead of time in John Deere Operations Center, we can select this option. From here, we can select our variety locator map. We can push on this box where we can then select the map corresponding with the field that we're in. From here, if you'd like to, you can enable the audible tones as you change through each variety, as well as if you would like a visual notification to pop up on the top of the screen to tell you that you're changing into a different variety. From here, we can utilize another shortcut to take us to our harvest setup so we can continue entering the settings in the combine to get ready to go to the field. By pushing on our harvest settings, we do have some preset options. Or if you find that as you work through the field and find that you have a good starting point, other than what we have as default presets, you can save some of these options so that way you don't have to write them down on a piece of paper as you come back to them each year, as seasons change, or if you have a particular variety that really prefers a set of settings you can go ahead and save those in here. So it's easy for you to come back to at any later on time. In our current settings, this will take us to um, some of our harvest adjustments. Again, where we can come in and push and adjust any of the settings on our cleaning system. This is also where we'll come in to set our loss monitor. The most important thing here is that we adjust the combine until we're completely happy with our sample and what's coming out behind the combine. Once we're completely happy with that, we'll set this to current. And that's telling the combine monitor our vision track system exactly what we're happy with. If I pull up our monitor here, 
this is what we would normally see on the corner post where we display our losses and what's acceptable to give the operator a reference point as you're running through the field. We have another shortcut for our outside configuration. This tells us um, it is a helpful reminder for the operator of exactly what adjustments need to be made outside the cab for that given crop type. Our header settings will also be changed automatically as soon as we plug in a different header. If these combines don't update, it suggests that you turn the combine off and then restart it again, and it should re-recognize those settings. Again, by pushing on that, there's another shortcut that's pulled us into our heading adjustments that we'll jump back to shortly. Our auto header controls are something by default that are generally turned off. So if we want any of the, this functionality, as we go through, we can turn these options on and off depending on our field conditions and what we wanna see. Since this is a simulator, uh, we do have some warnings in here because some calibrations haven't been done on the header. We can also adjust our residue management system. So if we've got a chopper and we need to change our spreader widths or adjust them from side to side, if we have that set up on our combine, we can adjust those here. Next, we'll jump into our guidance portion. We can do this by selecting the guidance tab at the bottom of the screen here in the shortcut. If we're running row feelers in the combine, we do need to come in and turn those on to enable them for the very first time. We can do this by hitting our additional settings option, scrolling down to our row sense and turning it on, selecting the entry mode that we want, and then we can go into our row sense status in order to see if the system is ready to go. This is also where we'll get our shortcut to calibrate our row feeler sensors, and then enter in any offsets if the combine seems to be pulling to one side or the other. As we come back to our guidance page here, that also shows our background map. From this map or any of the other views that you would pick or customize on your screen, you can change the background layer that's displayed behind the combine. If we go down to the lower left-hand corner to this box, we can see our background options. If I come over here to the other layers, this is where I can select to see coverage, moisture, and dry yield displayed in the background. So now if we were harvesting, we would see our dry yield map show up. If I go back to that same icon, now I get my legend in here. If we wanna make any changes to this legend, if we're in corn, we might wanna make this more closely match the field conditions that we're in and the yield that we're receiving. So we could adjust the top end of the scale to 200 and maybe the bottom down to 150. If we wanna cycle through our layer options without going through the menu, we have this box with the arrows that are rotating clockwise. This will change our background layer each time that I push that and cycle through. We also see that since we've enabled our row sense option, that we have an additional icon down here. This icon will change colors based on the current state of the row sense system. It also is a shortcut to take us back into our row sense status. That'll give us not only a, the color indication, but a description of what it is exactly. This will give us a description to match the icon and the color status. Now that we've set up our guidance options, we'll go back and use our shortcut keys, our hard buttons that are located below our monitor. If we push on the icon that looks like our header, this will take us back to the page that we skipped over earlier to adjust our header settings. Now this should have our correct header type on there. 
even though this doesn't look like a box that we can push on, we can go ahead and push on it. And this is where we can set our current recording height. So depending on field conditions, you'll want to come in here and adjust this recording height option so that way we're not leaving blanks in the field or we're not recording when we shouldn't be. From there, you can make your adjustments to the header based on your preferences, as well as make the adjustments to your auto controls. This is another area and a shortcut to come back to that same point. If we want to make any adjustments to the combine itself, we can do that by pushing on the combine image here that references where each area is at on the combine. We can use these to make those adjustments or we can come over to the armrest monitor and push on the corresponding buttons over there and then use our scroll wheel to make the adjustment. We can also come down to our shortcut bar located below the monitor and push on our icon that looks like a rotor to come in and make those adjustments. So if we had another page up, for instance, that just showed mapping, but we didn't have harvest settings on there, we can utilize these buttons to jump to that page and make our changes. The next thing that we'll set is our grain handling options. And we can do this by utilizing a shortcut if we have one of the modules set up on the screen, or we can use the shortcut down on the keypad located below the monitor. Now, before we start harvesting, we'll want to ensure that we have the empty level set at zero. And then as we harvest along, this indicator will rise. Uh, what this is doing is taking the reading off of our mass flow sensor and determining how much crop has entered the combine. When we've gotten to the point of what we consider what we want to be the 100% full level so that we don't spill any grain over the top of the, of the top of the combine, we can go ahead and then set that full level mark. That way each time as this indicator comes up, we'll ensure that we don't have any spills. We can go down here and make any easy adjustments to our moisture sensor if we find that we're off after receiving some information back from um, a portable tester or from a co-op, we can come in and enter in any type of corrections that we need in there. We can also enable our alarms if we want it to uh, give us a notification that we're outside of what we deem as an acceptable range for a crop moisture level. As we cycle through our pages, we do have a page set up here for our work monitor to show a lot of our totals as we go through the field, both from combine performance as well as field information. We can also jump to this page in our field totals by utilizing the shortcut on our keypad below our monitor here. This is where we can see again our overall field totals and our load totals that will cycle through as we unload the combine. So far, we've used modules that have shortcuts built in to access a bunch of the machine settings and functionality. However, we can access most of these through the menu as well. If we push on the menu, it's divided up in three separate categories. The machine settings tab will be all of our calibrations and functionality more closely related to changes on the machine itself. Anything underneath applications will be most of our AMS functions and functionality. And system will make adjustments to the display itself. One of the things that we'll want to do before we go out to the field is complete all of our calibrations. We'll want to come in and ensure that we do for sure all of our header calibrations. Under the harvest tab, we want to come in before we start off for the season and do our mass flow vibration and calibration. This will ensure that anything that's resonating throughout the machine as it runs unloaded uh, will be taken out of the equation to ensure that we have good in yield information and good accuracy. Our moisture sensor temperature calibration will want to complete ahead of time, preferably with the machine in shade on a cool morning before the sun is beating down on the combine. Uh, 
um, which would end up throwing those readings off quite a bit. 